school is that regular instruction program. Now, there's another one I want you to look at at 72610. 72610. Many of you are concerned as commissioners about the operation of the plant. That's your utilities, mowing, pest control, waste services, everything that we pay, the county pays, is from that line, 62 or 72610. Now maintenance of the plant is, is it, what that does there if there's been some big extra expenditure. Maintenance of the plant, 72620. Only expenditures related to the safety grant. This body Patterson will be glad to answer any questions about the safety grant we receive from the state of Tennessee. Rumor has it from National that we may get more money in the safety grant category. And I'm still looking at how the governor's bill is going to affect us when he says that every student that doesn't have an SRO will get an SRO. But we have already seen a problem with that, haven't we, Ms. Bonnie? The problem with that is there's not enough money in that funding to fund all students that don't have an SRO. So there's already a wrinkle in the blue. We are holding our fingers and our toes. We're crossing them, hoping that we get something. But we don't know. The safety grant has been used to do some things, and I hope this is a public meeting, so we can't talk a huge amount about that. I'd be glad to talk to you, Bonnie, if that talk to you personally on what's been done on safety money. An example of public knowledge, Mr. Nichols, we've got a gate put up there at the high school on the back. That's an electronic gate. It's going to have one up there coming there from Liberty. That would do it. There's an electronic gate when they punch in the code and the gate opens. Part of that is funded by the public with the same. And you can probably see that now. You can't get a high school kids. You can see how much you make the gate. Okay? Are we good? Okay? Now look at those numbers. I'm going to let you sit with your board members. Your school board members. By the way, I have been taxed. Travis Turney, bless his heart, is stuck on I 24. So he was trying to get here. So he apologizes. Bless his heart being in Nashville today. So I think we usually don't have problems here in this area, which I Except on River Road. When a tire blows, blows over school bus. That's what happened in here today. Okay? All right? Now, I have principals available. I have supervisors available. We are ready to answer your questions by school. If you want to do it, although the fifth answer is going to be a little bit difficult, I don't think there's going to be questions on the fifth. I hope that's hard. Or uh, the other answer is going to ask questions about the fifth. So. But uh, we'll try to help you. All right? You want to spend a few minutes with that or do you want to move on? I figured this is where we could get our most questions from. I just want to say on behalf of our principals, I know you can figure this out, but that is not our salary under office as principal. That's a whole lot of things. Absolutely. Not just salary. Ms. Karen, you want to talk about what? That's assistant principal secretaries, salaries, taxes, benefits, other related expenditures in regards to line 72410. You are correct. I was going to make that a point. You wish it was, though.
Depending on copy, machine, contract. I have something. Mr. Cooper. Hey, base for some of that. I don't want to go base for some of that. They don't want to get through your time to interest. Mr. Curtis. Okay. Mr. Curtis. Okay. I have a question. I have a question. It's not necessary. Okay. I'm going to tell you. Stay on. And I'll. Well, I got to go on. You know what else you do on the field. You may have to put this toward one of the uh, people here, but uh, I think that uh, something that has been talked about and should be kind of clarified for the commissioners is in the uh, category of out-of-county students that come here. How does the funding help? What clarify that for the commissioners? Okay. I need to to out-of-county students. Now, out-of-county students, as part of the EV, we still get that amount of money from the state. So if that, whatever comes in, we still get that money from the state of Tennessee. Now, we used to charge tuition, and that went into a certain line item. The board voted a few years ago not to do tuition. And so we get that money from the BEB, and we utilize that money for that. Mr. Bain, I think you and Jay were on the board at I want to tell the commissioners about why we decide we're not charging out any students anymore to come to Camp Camp. Do you want to do it? Was... I can add my opinion on that. Uh, the BEP funds us roughly $7,000 per student. $7,400 last year. We were charging $800 Correct. to bring in a child, charging $800. A lot of them. I was going to ask how many how many average county students do we have? Okay, come over here to the folks, and she will give you an approximate number because what happens? Angela, you got to stay away from where? From Coffee County, she got one of the things they do. They can't get the paper from Coffee. Karen, you just had a conversation earlier with you. I think I have six right now that are classified as. Well, I have met with five families in the last six weeks that are coming from different places in Rutherford County, but they're really close to us. Some of them are from Rutherford County, but on that old highway past the post office. Uh, and they're going to be bused to Whitworth Buchanan from that area. Um, I've had a couple others just from different areas close to us with different schools. And it looks like they've all taken registration papers. If they bring those back, I'll have 12 that want to enroll. And I've told them that if it causes an over that we would not hire another teacher, that they would be given the option to go to another school. But right this minute, none of them are causing over just for me, so it looks like I'll have close to 20 out-of-county students in the fall. I think in the past, we've had a number of about 20 kids that were out-of-county that we collected at $700 on them. Um, and I would say we're roughly 30, 32 right now. Okay, so go on. So, So go by, going back to Carrie's point, if, if we go above whatever, let's see, the first. Oh, if you go above the number and it causes us to have to hire a teacher, we won't keep them or we'll send them to the teacher. Gotcha. That, that makes sense to you. Give them an option. And we had that when I was at Eastside. We had some Westside students that was going to cause overages and they came to me at Eastside. And parents have to provide transportation. They didn't have their own transportation. So really, it's a, it's a no cost to the county and the schools, and we get the BEP. We get the BEP. <laughs> and if you think 20 students times $7,000, right. big math. Right. Versus an $800 tuition. I did, I did the best math, so I may be wrong, but I think it's about 20 kids that we're going to get. 
tuition from each one of those, that would have been about $25,000 that my day, $100. We're getting state money of $224,000 in return. So I just thought the return on investment is pretty good here if we're sitting in classrooms that have space. The other way I think about it is <clears throat> our governor is proposing a voucher system right now for students to be able to go anywhere in the school that they want to. And when they take their voucher, they take that $7,000 with them. So we're getting basically a voucher to take those out of county students. If you want to think about it that way. Okay. Mr. Curtis, my only question to that, taking out of county students, what if that student has caused a lot of problems in the okay. school that came to before? I appreciate that question. What do we do, principals? What do we do? Lisa's our stringer. Lisa Flag is our stringer. I lost to this. What's the first thing Lisa does? Call the previous school and say if there any behavior problems or attendance problems. And if, okay. and if there has been a lot of behavior problems, we don't take them? If they move in, you have to take them, right? If they want to go here. But I'm talking about just some that just want to come here from another county. We don't take them. All right, I'm going to go ask, I'm going to get Mr. Pickles involved. Mr. Pickles, uh, probably one of the best public speakers in our audience. So, Mr. Pickles, they are talking for a long time. So, before you come, you can come and tell the store or tell these officials on board about what you have to do. What, what do you got? This happens to be that you got in the house to go to the right now. You don't have to be this kind of punctuation. Roughly, I'm going to say roughly about um, 20 students out of the county right now. So, uh, again, I, I just had conversations this spring and we're pulling in, I know for a fact, four new students from the Woodward Foot Camp in that area that are coming in that are already.
So every, every student comes the county matches a $15. That's pretty good uh, investment, uh, investment to get return on investment. Those kids, Corey was talking about uh, revenue is how we're going to get it. This is a bad way to say it, but they are bodies to us. They're, they're valuable to, to this county and these out of county students. And we offer a hour of arms for the moment. They have screening to keep out the, the problems. And we can't see them. They can't just pick up a, a, a Karen school west side and she's overcrowded. They may have to go all the way across to the school worker. We take them to see them. But we are putting in some good kids with this program to, stay, to, to leave some of these larger schools. I talked to principals way from here, they talk about these smaller schools. I've heard a lot of good comments about it, that where they've changed some of their systems to larger schools. But, uh, these kids are a commodity. You don't like to refer to them that way, but they're, they're valuable they can't count it. At this point, we might do breakout sessions where folks in each of the districts have the opportunity. I'd like to say one other thing before we break out. We were talking about the smaller schools and how valuable they are. Um, a few of our commissioners have wanted to close or combine schools. You have the BEP formula in front of you. If you combine, let's just take my representation of Short Mountain and Eastside. You, you've got the, the class size there. If you put those two schools together, going to lose a principal maybe because the classes will oversize what the state recommends and you're going to have to go to those teachers and have room for that and you're going to have a larger school and you're not going to have that small school next year. Um, it, it's a rough situation. You will save the building maintenance but when you shut a building down it's done. And that's something that I don't think the people in County County are ready for yet. To add on to what David's saying, we don't have a school that can combine schools without them building on. So therefore, you're going to empty a building and add on rooms because, like you said, the state minimum in each classroom. So, you know, you're going to get, let's just say short amount of these sites. Like, that's the one I hear out of the community all the time. It's like they, they won't all fit without adding on to the building. So now you've got a building uh, I'll just want to say, as far as closing schools and consolidating schools, that's beyond the scope of the commission's uh, authority anyway, so I'm only back to the board of education. And that's why I like to say the commission all the time. Sorry, that's beyond the scope of the commission. I've already said how I vote on that. No. <laughs> no. But that's, that's a discussion probably for our next meeting that we that we have 10 year 15 year projection. You're correct. I agree. And, and I say that from this standpoint. I don't, I'm not advocating anything that y'all's decision to make, and I, I do sincerely believe that. But at the same time, you, you've got schools that are 50, 60 years old. So, I mean, are we going to continue to maintain a 100 year old school? see what I'm saying? So I mean, we, we do have to look beyond today into 5, 10, 15 years from now and see. And like you said, I don't think that I don't think the community's ready for it. You gotta eat that elephant one bite at a time uh, or a little choke to death on it. So it's not beyond the realm of thought. I'll go ahead and say that from my opinion of it. Um, I think you can improve academics more than you can anything else if you combine need a building to hold some larger groups of children. And we're talking about a $25 to $30 million project. I think it would help the community and help the children. But the people of Cannon County are not ready for it. And we sure can't pay for it. When we get to that point, I think we start discussing it. But until then, it's a moving point. Okay, I don't know how I can ask the principal, so I have Doug Gass, the moderator today for the Republican 
Hey, since uh, the fifth district's not here, do you want me to take Kane County High School? And since I'm not yeah, here, At this time, we'll take a break, and when we come back with the second part of this.